Yo, what's good fam? It's your man Greg, aka G Breezy, making it easy, back with another video. One of the questions that I get asked often on my other channel is, what is your live stream setup like? What camera do you use? What is your studio like? So today we're gonna cover all of that from start to finish. Let's get to the freaking point. First and foremost, obviously I have a camera. This camera that I'm on came out in 2016 and I'm still using it till this day in 2022. I purchased it in 2017, refurbished from the manufacturer, have not had a single issue with it. The build quality is amazing. It films up to 1080p HD in 60 frames per second, so you can get a little bit of slow motion takes wonderful pictures i think it is like 24 megapixel camera man no complaints about this camera at all i'm talking about the canon 80d dslr camera this thing has been a workhorse i've used it for music videos short film obviously i live stream with it on a consistent basis usually two times a week over an hour each time when i power this camera I like to use a dummy battery from Amazon. You can get one between 20 and $30, plug it right into the camera, plug it right into the wall. It allows you to continuously record as long as your laptop recognizes it as a webcam. The lens that I paired this with is the Sigma 18 to 35 F 1.8 lens. This lens is amazing. It's very sharp. I love it. The only issue I have with this lens is that it's loud. So if you have a shotgun microphone over top of your camera, it's gonna pick up those little noises when it's tracking your face, doing the autofocus. While we're talking about autofocus, this is one of these legendary Canon DSLR dual pixel autofocus cameras. It works wonderfully. It's tracking my face. I can go off the screen, come back on. It's gonna track me. I can get close. I can get far away all of that good stuff i can showcase some of my gear you know what i mean it helps if you obviously cover your face up it's gonna focus in on the gear as soon as i take it down right back on my face no issues with this at all it's wonderful i did eventually upgrade to the sony a7s3 mainly because i wanted a 4k camera and because i wanted a camera that does well in low light this aps-c sensor and this kind of older camera doesn't really do well in low light would i recommend you purchasing this camera today probably not because i think it's still retailing at about a thousand dollars with the lens right you can definitely find it cheaper but there's a lot of other options i would recommend you looking into other than this camera but if you want it go ahead and get it because it produces a great image so listen we've talked about the camera and the lens but just as important as that is the lighting so i have these neat these newer lights these newer lights one is off to my left and one is off to my back right to create separation between me and the background right you want something that can kind of be inviting so you want to create a little bit of separation especially with this f 1.8 aperture i can get a little bit of that blurry background that people love so much on this front light i do have a soft box that's on it to soften the light on my face so it's not producing a harsh light i also have this honeycomb filter that's over top of it to really kind of concentrate the light so that it's really just keying in only on me i like that because it keeps the rest of the room dark which allows the lights in the background which are the we light okay these are your typical square rectangle rgb lights you can get pretty much any color out of these it has different modes on it you can get it to flash you can get it to stay still all of these different things but these have been wonderful these particular lights uh the battery is okay i do have to charge them you know after about two uses when i'm streaming about an hour i like to at least charge it after the first use just to be on the safe side these are not magnetic but they have ones out now that are magnetic these this model is a little bit older right but nonetheless this has been a really great um, addition to the studio i think one youtuber says you got to have those douchebag youtube lights 
So personally, I think they create a great effect in the back. And I'm gonna show you what all of these lights look like if we turn them off. So are you afraid of the dark? This is what the room looks like, pitch black. This is what we look like with just one light on that's in the front. This is what we look like with both Niwa lights on. And by the way, I should have mentioned about these lights. They're very portable. You can fold them up. You can collapse them. They fit right in the car if you're going to a shoot. They have the window things on them so you can kind of concentrate the light just a little bit if you want to focus the light more. I really like these a lot. They've been a great addition and they're kind of thin. I had some other lights that were really good, but they were extremely bulky. These are kind of thin. I appreciate that. Now let me show you the background lights and that's the shot that you've already seen. All right, so boom. So those are the lights. Lights are just as important as the camera. Lights can make a basic camera look much better. Let's talk about the audio. I happen to be using the Shure SM7B microphone. This is the industry standard. You don't need this microphone. This is about $400 plus you need another 150 for the cloud lifter. Then you need XLR cables and audio interface. I happen to be running this one through an audio interface called the Zoom L12 Live Track but you don't need that. You can just get a Scarlett 212 or you can bypass the XLR setup completely and just get you a USB microphone. For years, I used the Blue Yeti microphone. <laughs> that microphone was great. I had no issues with it at all. I also did a comparison between this microphone and his little brother, the Shure MV7, which can also be plugged in as USB. So you don't need all this extra stuff I have. I'm just over the top. I got this to kind of future proof for some other things I might be doing in the future and also because I produce music. In this studio, I happen to have audio panels. I guess I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight audio panels. The purpose is because you don't want your sound bouncing off the walls. You don't wanna create reverb in your microphone or echo, right? So if you have a microphone like this, it helps already because it's designed to reject the noise from the back and only pick up the noise from the front. But typically speaking, you want your sound to be as flat as possible. You don't want a lot of echo and reverb if you can avoid it. If you can't do that, if you're filming in a room with carpet, sofas, a really cushiony soft room, that helps a lot. Just think about if you're clapping, you know, how much does that clap echo? That's something you wanna be mindful of. So that is the audio. Now I wanna show you how it all comes together in the program that I personally choose to use, which is OBS. Oh, I also use StreamYard, but we'll save that for another day. But it's really the same principle. StreamYard is actually much easier, but let's look at OBS. All right, so boom. Let's get into OBS and how to stream to YouTube. First thing you wanna do is have OBS on your machine, search it, you'll find open broadcaster software, install it, very simple to install. Once you get OBS on your machine, what you're gonna find is a gray screen like this, but you won't find my face on it. It's probably gonna be blank. Also, at the bottom left, you're gonna see scenes and sources. What you wanna do is create a scene. What is a scene? A scene is basically the shot that you want. Now I have a main cam, I call my scene a cam. Then I have one for internet when I'm browsing the internet. So let's create a brand new scene. We're gonna call this live stream test. We're gonna click okay, it's gonna be blank. Now you'll see we don't have any sources. So now we need to add a source, which is just simply everything that goes into your scene. So obviously we need a camera. So let's go to add. We're gonna add a video capture device. Now I have one that exists already, but for the sake of this example, we're gonna call this Canon 80D. That's the webcam I'm using, using the Canon utility, which you can, the Canon webcam utility, which you can download. So we're gonna create this. We're gonna say, okay, create a new one. And it's gonna give us a drop down. So what you see here is every option that I have available as far as a camera on my machine. 
The FaceTime one is the default Mac webcam. I could put that on there if I want it. But rather, I want to use my Canon 80D. It produces a better image. So we're going to select that. Going to select your resolution. The highest one I see is this one. So I'm going to leave it there. We're going to click OK. So I got that. I kind of don't like the way it just popped up halfway on the screen. So let's go to the corner. Let's click our mouse and let's drag it down to fit the whole screen. So we have our video. Now we need sound. So we're going to go to our source. We need to add an audio input capture. We're going to create a new. We're going to call this one Shure SM7B. That's the mic that I'm using. We're going to click OK. Drop down, you'll see all of your mic options. You can use the default MacBook microphone or whatever your whatever comes up for you. Or if you want to use a specific mic, which I'm sure you will, you're going to do the Zoom L12 driver in my case because that's what, what my shore is connected to. We're going to click OK. So I have my audio. You see the audio down here. Um, you, you see how it's doing green. You don't want it to go to red. Red is when you're peaking. So my audio levels look good. Now, I like that. We got sight. We got sound. Let's say that I want to show the internet. Uh, what I want to do is go to the corner. I'm going to drag me all the way down here. And I now want to add a window capture. But I know that the window capture I want to add will only let me add if I bring it up. So I'm going to go to Google Chrome. I'm going to make Google Chrome a little bit narrow for the sake of our example, right? But make sure that you have Chrome up so that OBS can recognize it. So when I go to add my window capture, if I go to create new and call this one Chrome test, click OK. I'm going to go and I see Chrome, I see what it's on, new tab, and I'm going to select that. And now I'm going to click OK, and Chrome shows up in my OBS. Excellent. The only thing is I don't really like the way that this thing is positioned. So what I'm going to do, first and foremost, I don't like the fact that it's covering me, right? So if you go to your sources, what you'll notice is that the Canon 80D is at the bottom. So whatever is at the top is what's going to take priority. So I'm going to click on Canon 80D, and I'm going to go to this little uh, arrow down here at the bottom, and I'm going to move it up, move it up, and now I plop back on the top. So I'm on the top here, and I can position Chrome however I want it to display on my broadcast. So... That is how you get at least the basics for your scenes and sources in OBS. Now, there's a few things preference-wise that I need to show you. So let's go. We got, we got OBS open. Let's go to OBS. Let's go to Preferences. Most of this you'll leave alone, but let's go to Stream because we're doing that. I want to stream to YouTube, so I'm going to go to Service. I'm going to select YouTube. Server, I'm just going to leave it blank, and it's going to give you the option to connect to an account if you have a YouTube account. So let's click this, and I am going to choose the account that I want to stream to. I'm going to click it, and it's going to say OBS wants to access your account. We're going to say allow. Authorization completed successfully. You can now close this page. Let's close it. Let's open OBS. Uh, now what you'll sign, see is that it's connected to my preferred YouTube account. Now, we're just going to click. Before we click OK, I just want to show you a few other things. Um, it has the bit rate things down here and all of that. There was another option that I didn't show you, which is to use the stream key. That's the old way of doing it. OBS has apparently made it much easier by just going straight to your account. But in the past, you would have had to go on to YouTube, find your stream key, copy it, paste it in there and all that stuff. So let's go to output for streaming. 
There's other options in OBS, but we're just doing streaming today. My encoder happens to be 264 bit rates coming in at 2500 kbps, kilobytes per second. All this is doing is making sure that you're not buffering. So if you move this up higher, then you'll stop buffering. Uh, CPU usage, I have a pretty decent computer, a pretty decent laptop. So I have mine set to very fast. But depending on the power of your computer and, and your resources, you can set this to whatever you want. So for now, we're going to click OK. So I got that set up. It says that um, I can create a broadcast. Let's close this for the moment. Uh, we'll just say OK. Don't show that again. Now, let's say that I want to create a broadcast in YouTube. What I'm going to do, if I'm in my YouTube, uh, let's make this bigger. And don't be looking at what I look at, but I'm going to go to create and I'm going to go to go live. From here, I have several options. I like to schedule mine, so I'm going to go to manage. I'm going to go to schedule stream. Now, in my case, because I've streamed before, what you'll find is that it has, I can use one that I've already done. In your case, it'll probably be new. So let's go to create new. Let's call this test stream OBS. You put your description, you put your category, you fill in all your information. You go to next. You pretty much gonna leave this, this, this screen blank. You go to next. And now you have the option to schedule your stream. I'm gonna set mine to private because we're doing an example, and I'm going to set this to 810, which happens to be the closest time, but you can choose your date and you can choose your time. Let's just set this to 815 just to show, show us that we can switch it. So we're going to say done. I've now scheduled a stream that I can do in YouTube. Once you get it scheduled, all you got to do is go to OBS, you'll see an option at the bottom right that says start streaming. You click this, it's gonna give you the option to manage broadcast. You can create your own broadcast and do it that way. Honestly, I've never done it, but I'm sure it's simple. Since we scheduled one, if you go to select existing broadcast and you highlight the one that you want to stream, you click it, you're gonna see in the window at the bottom right, select broadcast and start streaming. And once you do that, what will happen is you will be able to go to YouTube and where it says go live here, it's going to turn blue and you're up and running. So listen, family, that is pretty much my setup. This is the camera that I use. This is the mic that I use. These are the lights that I use. This is the studio. Hopefully, I've covered everything. If there's something that I forgot, or if you have any other questions, let me know. Other than that, I'm done with this video. Make sure y'all check those playlists. Hopefully, you learned something today. That's all I have for you in this video. You all take care and be blessed.